Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this webinar brought to you by City Index. Uh, today is uh, Trading Plan Discipline. Uh, this is part of our Wednesday series of educational webinars that we give here at City Index at uh, 8 o'clock p.m. on uh, Wednesdays uh, in the UK. Okay, so uh, let's get started real quick. Now, in terms of what we're going to be talking about today, uh, it's really all about discipline. Trading well is really all about discipline. So when you when you really think about it, you know, it's discipline to create a trading strategy, first of all. So creating a trading strategy, whether you create it yourself from scratch or you get it from somewhere else, uh, but really a big part of that is is uh, not just creating it or getting it from somewhere, but more importantly is to test it. So you need to have the discipline to test whatever trading strategy you plan on using to make sure that it's effective and over time it brings you uh, consistent net profitability. So uh, that's an important part of uh, the discipline of trading, so tra creating a trading strategy. Now beyond that is creating the entire trading plan, which includes not just the strategy, but also uh, a lot of other things, including the risk management aspect of it, uh, position sizing, money management, uh, trading psychology, all of that uh, is encompassed within the trading plan. And so you really need to be able to have the discipline to follow the trading plan, and a big part of that is having a trading journal, and I'm going to be talking about that a lot today. So in terms of um, creating a trading journal and having the discipline to uh, follow the trading journal and to record everything that uh, goes on in your trading is very, very important. I do this on a daily basis. I write down everything, my reasons for getting into a trade, my reasons for getting out of a trade, the strategies that I'm using you know, uh, my risk management plan, et cetera. All of that is going to be in my trading plan and in my trading journal. Okay, so with that being said, uh, let's move forward real quick. Today, I'm not just going to be talking about uh, trading plan discipline. I'm also going to be giving a, you a brief overview of uh, the last several weeks of what we've been talking about, uh, just to get, get uh, those of you who haven't, uh, uh, you know, seen these webinars, just to get you up to speed. I'm just going to go through some of the, uh, most important points of what I talked about in the last several webinars, and then we'll go from there. Okay, uh, my name is James Chen. I am the Chief Technical Strategist with City Index Group, if you're not familiar with me. Uh, let's move forward real quick. Uh, just a quick disclaimer. Um, Financial trading carries a, a high level of risk to your capital with the possibility of losing more than your initial investment and may not be suitable for all investors. Ensure that you fully understand the risks involved and seek investment advice if necessary. Okay, let's move forward real quick, and uh, this is just briefly about me. Uh, if you've listened to any of my recordings uh, in the past several weeks or, uh, you know, past several years for that matter, uh, you'll know, uh, you know, uh, that I am the Chief Technical Strategist at City Index Group, which basically means that I trade, I analyze, and I educate uh, with regard to trading in the markets. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much enough about me. It's all here. Uh, this is all recorded, so uh, if you want to uh, be able to take a look at the uh, recording, uh, if you're if you come in late or uh, you know you have to leave early or what have you, uh, that's always up for you on our website at cityindex.co.uk. Okay, let's move forward real quick. Uh, okay, it's just a, a, a brief overview of what we've talked about in the past several weeks. Again, this is the ongoing uh, webinar series every Wednesday. Uh, it's actually going to be uh, pushed to every other Wednesday uh, from, I believe, from next week on. Uh, and we're going to be talking about lots of different uh, subjects uh, moving forward from here. But uh, just to give you an overview of what we've talked about, we gave you an introduction to trading currencies, indices, commodities, and shares, basically all the financial markets that you could trade using the City Index platform. Uh, we talked about the best indicators for technical trading. Uh, then we went on and talked about uh, mo the most common chart patterns and how to interpret them and how to use them. And again, these are all, if you missed any of these, they're all on the website at cityindex.co.uk. They're all recorded. And this one will be as well and, and posted to our website uh, by tomorrow. Uh, then we talked about using multiple time frames when analyzing charts. Uh, I gave you a... Uh, uh, I give you a specific strategy for how to use multiple time frames to uh, get into trend trades. And uh, just one thing, someone uh, wrote to me um, the other day regarding uh, multiple time frames asking me, uh, you know, 
uh, if you're looking to trade reversals, should, be, you, should you be using this multiple time frame trading strategy? And my answer to that was uh, not necessarily. That multiple time frame trading strategy that I presented uh, is basically uh, for trending markets. Okay, if you're looking to trade reversals, you could also use uh, different time frames. That's uh, you know that's uh, completely up to you. But that specific strategy that I brought up several weeks ago on multiple time frame trading was uh, purely for trending markets. So you're looking to follow follow the trend and get in on uh, on uh, strong trends. Okay. So that being said, um, if you do trade reversals, you could certainly use uh, different uh, multiple time frames, but not that particular strategy that I that I uh, presented. Okay, and then we talked about planning high probability trade entries, and uh, st uh, and then setting stop losses and profit targets. And then finally, last week we talked about emotions and trading psychology. I think that was uh, very useful. It was you know it's very useful for me to to go over this material uh, again and on an ongoing basis because it's uh, very very important to your trading. And then today, of course, we're going to be talking about trading plan discipline, where uh, you know we touch upon uh, you know how to uh, how to have the discipline to follow to first of all to create a trading plan, and then to follow that trading plan using a journal, and uh, all of that good stuff, including the uh, the trading strategies. Okay, so let's move forward real quick here. Okay, and then uh, next next week we're going to be talking about candlestick analysis, and then from there this is going to be uh, every other Wednesday we're going to be talking about Fibonacci trading, trading with support and resistance, trading with the trend, uh, counter trend, and range trading, and then it's going to go on from there, and then we're going to uh, have uh, you know different topics from there. Starting from next week, uh, we're going to be talking more about the strategy aspect of it. Uh, prior to this, we've been talking about all of the other very, very important things that go into trading, um, including the psychology, including the trading plan, including the, uh, you know, uh, uh, planning uh, tra uh, trading entries and, and exits and what have you. Uh, starting next week, we're going to be uh, talking about more concrete, uh, you know, uh, strategies for uh, looking at the markets, technical strategies for looking at the markets and trading the markets, okay? So uh, let's move forward real quick. Now, what I'd like to do now is uh, just to give a, uh, just to give a brief overview of the, the most important, the key points, the most major points that I've been talking about within the last several weeks. Uh, I really want to, uh, you know, uh, hit home on those on those different uh, uh, on those different aspects of trading, uh, and then we'll move into uh, the trading plan discipline. Okay, so this is an overview of the key points. And again, if you have any questions. Uh, you know, as always, please feel free to type them into the questions window. Before I go over the key points, uh, there there was a question here from Andrew. Um, when using uh, two or three different time charts for the same instrument, should the windows that the chart are in be of the same proportions? I've noticed that movements can be a little misleading if one of the charts is full screen on one monitor and two others are split across another screen. Any advice? Uh, well, that's a good question. It's it's good to have uh, the same proportions on the different uh, uh, the different time frame charts you're having. It really depends on uh, your your setup at home or wherever you trade. Uh, you know, if you're uh, if you have three screens, three monitors, or two monitors, or one monitor, or what have you, it really depends on that. Uh, what I usually do is I uh, separate my charts and I have them as uh, full screens, and then uh, I'll bring up the charts as I need them. Uh, so, uh, you know, each of these are going to be full screens if I'm using a, a one screen uh, setup. If I'm using uh, my three screen setup, then what I'm going to usually have is the three different time frames on the three different uh, screens, okay? So uh, that is a good uh, question there. Okay, so uh, just an overview of what we talked about, the most important points uh, with regard to how I look at trading, how you know I think is prudent for uh, for you as retail traders to look at trading and to approach trading. Uh, let's go over some of the key points of that, and then I'm going to go into trading plan discipline. Okay, so first of all, uh, you know I want to go back to my tried and true principles for uh, trading, and this is uh, you know in terms of the entries and exits. Uh, what, as far as I'm concerned, you know, one way to enter a trade is in the right direction at the best possible price. I know you've heard this a lot before from me, if you've, uh, you know, heard me speak before, but it's very, very uh, important that, uh, you know, this is what underlies uh, exactly how I trade. So when you're looking to, uh, to enter into any trade, I'm looking to get in at the right direction. Well, I mean, 
uh, that that's it's, it may seem very obvious. Everyone wants to get in at the right direction, you know, in the right direction, whether it's to the uh, to the upside or to the downside. Well, you know, basically what I mean by this is. I want to be looking at the trend, where the trend is. And this doesn't necessarily mean the daily trend. I know I, I look at the, you know, I, I uh, show my daily, my daily charts a lot. And a lot of people think that I only trade on, on daily charts. Well, that's, that's not true. I trade on many different charts, including very short-term charts. Uh, but I tend to uh, have my daily charts there you know, as my main analysis tool for the main trend. That being said, if you are a very short-term trader, you could look at the trend on a short-term chart. So there are many people out there that are intraday traders, which means you trade uh, within a trading day, uh, or generally speaking, within a trading day. And uh, for that, you could certainly also look at the trend for the, for the day. There, there are many, uh, you know, all the markets uh, basically uh, have trends for the day. I mean, if they're not... Uh, if they're not chopping around, going up and down, uh, there are often, very often, trends, daily trends within a day that you could take advantage of. And that's what I'm looking to do. Whenever I'm entering into a trade, I'm looking for the right direction, which is with the momentum of the market, with the trend, whether it's, uh, it's you know, the trend for the day, the trend for the week, the trend for the month, or the trend for the year. Okay, I'm looking to uh, enter a trade in the direction of the trend. Number two, I'm looking for a good price the best possible price. And for me, the best possible price is, you know, if there's an uptrend, I'm looking for a dip within that uptrend. If there's a downtrend, I'm looking for a rally within that downtrend to go short. Okay? So uh, that just makes a lot of sense to me, and this underlies, uh, you know, all of my entries, pretty much all of the entries that I use for all the strategies that I use. Now, um, there are two ways to exit a trade. Uh, number one, is at a loss where the market is telling you you're wrong. So uh, basically you would place your stop loss or you would get out of a trade where the market is telling you that your original rationale for getting into that trade is wrong. Okay, this could be uh, when I get in on an uptrend, then uh, the, the uh, you know, I get in on a dip on the uptrend and then it, uh, it goes, it keeps going down after the dip and it keeps uh, moving to the downside. Well, that's the market telling me that that was that may not have been a dip. That could have been a reversal. It could have been a deeper dip, or what have you. Okay. So uh, at that point, you should make the decision, uh, either the predetermined dis decision through a stop loss, or you should get out of the trade when the market is telling you that you're wrong. And if you want to uh, exit, and you know, of course, we want to all want to have a profit. If you exit at a profit, we want our profits to be preferably at a multiple of our defined risk. At the very least, I prefer my, uh, my profit targets to be uh, as large as or larger or significantly larger than my risk, okay? And this is very important. Okay, so those are my trade entry and exit principles. Uh, now, uh, just a couple questions here. Uh, Duresh, I am a swing trader and do top-down analysis currently going down from weekly to four hour for, uh, for entry. Uh, if not one hour, do you believe it is necessary to look at monthly nearly also? Uh, no. I mean, if you're a swing trader uh, and you're going, uh, I mean, this the top-down analysis approach is really good. That's basically uh, my approach for, uh, you know, the multiple time frame trading. I'm looking at uh, the big picture on the longer-term chart, and then I'm drilling down into progressively shorter time frames to look for my entry. And uh, this, is, uh, this is exactly what I do for many of my strategies. So in terms of if you're a swing trader and you're starting from the weekly chart and going down to four hour, I think that's perfect. Uh, if you are, uh, you know, if, if you want to get in the monthly or the yearly charts, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. Uh, if you mean that we're each, uh, we're each, uh, uh, candlestick is worth a month. Uh, that's pretty long. Okay, I, I, I don't, I don't think we even have those. But um, you know, I generally look at the daily chart, and then I'll uh, drill down to the four-hour chart, and then from there I'll drill down to the fifteen-hour chart. So the the really long-term charts I, I don't think are very necessary, especially if you're a swing trader. A swing trader being a, a relatively short-term trader looking for uh, to play the swings uh, in the markets. Okay, Andrew. What about uh, exiting the trade when the market tells you that the market is no longer going in the right direction, uh, uh, e.g., 
trailing stop to exit with a profit? Yes. Uh, what about exiting the trade when the market tells you that the market is no longer going in the right direction? Yes, absolutely. Uh, using a trailing stop? Absolutely. Yes, that's one of the uh, big ways that I, I do it. I talked a lot about this when we talked about exiting. Okay, and I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, right now as well. Uh, when you exit a trade. Um, yeah, I mean, it's basically when the market is telling you you're, uh, it's no longer going in the right direction. And uh, one way to do that is through the use of trailing stops. Trailing stop is basically you're locking in your profit, profits as the, the, uh, as the uh, trade goes in your direction, as the market goes in your direction. Okay, you're lock, locking in profits. And when the market ceases to go in your direction, that's when you get out. And that's the market telling you that your trade, while it may have been right before, it is it may not be right anymore. It may, you know, now it may be wrong. So that's the market telling you that you're wrong. Very good question there. Okay, so let's move forward here. These are my uh, trade entry and exit principles. And then I talk about my market principle a lot, trend, pullback, breakout. Uh, you know, it's very simple to understand this. Uh, you know, in 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 reality, when you're actually trading it, it's uh, not as clear cut, but that's why we have specific strategies to, to define how we get into trades, how we get out, to, out of trades, etc. So, uh, you know, the main market principle underlying all of my trading is the trend, the pullback, and the breakout. And when, you talk, when I talk about this, let's go back here, one way to enter a trade is the right direction at the best possible price. The right direction is the trend, the best possible price is the pullback, okay? And then after the pullback recovers, we look for a breakout in the direction of the trend. That is our entry there, and uh, that's how we get into trades, okay? And this is just a chart depiction of the same principle. We have the trend, we have a pullback, and then we have a breakout, and we uh, get in on the breakout, okay? So we've got the trend, that's the right direction. We've got a pullback, that's the best possible price. We've got the breakout, that's a recovery of the pullback. And that is showing us that short-term momentum is going back in the direction of the longer-term trend. And that's how, at least, I get into trades. Okay. Now, how do we, uh, this, again, this is an overview of the last several weeks, but how do we get into, uh, how do we actually get into the trade? Once our uh, strategy is telling us, okay, this is the time, uh, we've got the trend, we've got the pullback, Okay, we've got the breakout. Now, how do we get into the trade? Well, what I usually do is I use a breakout entry. So uh, there, there are several types of breakout entries. Now, uh, one could be a breakout above. If you're going long, it could be a, a breakout above a, a resistance level. Okay, uh, if you're going short, it could be a breakout below a support level. Okay, and let's go back to this diagram right here. Uh, as we can see, uh, this breakout here was above this counter trend resistance line. Okay, so that breakout was my trigger to get into this trade uh, because it was a breakout above this resistance line. Now, as you can see here, this is not a horizontal line. This is an angled line, angled to the downside. Okay, but that's also resistance. This is called dynamic resistance. The, the flat horizontal line is called uh, static resistance. Okay, so they're pretty much the, um, the same thing when you talk about uh, support or resistance, uh, whether it's dynamic resistance or... Uh, static resistance or dynamic support or static support, they're all breakouts of certain support or resistance levels. Okay. Now, uh, another way to play a breakout entry is, uh, you know, and I showed this on my multiple time frame trading strategy, is I'm looking for, a br if I'm going long, I'm looking for a breakout above the last candle high. Okay. And wh why am I doing that? Well, it's showing me that uh, there's momentum in the direction of my trade. And, I'm, you know, I want to go long at this point. My strategy has told me to go long. Now, I want the breakout above the last candle, the last candle be, you know, being when I decided I wanted to go long. I want, I want to break out above the last candle to show me that short-term momentum is going in my direction as well. Same thing to the downside. Um, you know, if I'm looking to go short, I want to break out below the last candle low, and that's showing me that uh, momentum is going down in the direction of my short trade, and that's when I want to get into the trade. Okay, basically we want to put all of our edges together and make as strong a case as possible for the direction of our trade that we're going in. Okay, I want a strong case to go long. Okay, or I want a strong case to go short. I don't want a weak case to go long or a weak case to go short because in that case it's not a strong, uh, it's not a strong trade and why should I get into a trade that's not a, a strong trade? There's so many opportunities every day with all the different markets that we could trade. 
Okay, all the different time frames, all the different markets, all the different strategies that, that we could trade. There's so many opportunities out there. Why would you want to go with a weak trade? You want to go with a high probability, strong trade, and only those types of trades in order to, um, you know, maximize your, prob uh, your probability of profit. Okay. Um, okay, so those are the two types of breakout entry. And, you know, I have many, many different strategies that I use, but uh, in terms of entry, Usually, it's through a breakout entry, any trade I get into, okay? Now, trade exiting, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Uh, there are many aspects of trade exiting. It's not just your initial stop loss, okay, and your initial profit target, but those are important parts of it. So, uh, you know, anytime I get into a trade, I'm going to have my initial stop loss. I may not initially have my initial profit target, but I will have my initial stop loss in the beginning. Okay, because this is going to show me where the market is telling me I'm wrong, and therefore I should get out of the trade immediately. Okay, I shouldn't hesitate. I shouldn't wait. I should get out of the trade immediately. Now, what happens? A lot of people ask me, what happens uh, when the market uh, takes you out of your stop loss and then bounces, uh, bounces back up and, and goes in the direction of your trade, and you know you lost money where you could have made money? Well, that's part of trading. Okay, so uh, th those kinds of losses they happen. Of course, they happen. But, uh, you know, they should be expected part of your trading. I and mean, that's the market. The, you, you can't dictate what the market's going to do. So if it takes you out and then, it go, and then it subsequently goes back in the direction of your trade, you know, you lost that. But at least you were able to cut your losses. And, uh, you know, if, uh, if, that, if that loss had turned into a catastrophic loss, then that's much, much worse than having missed a trade. Okay. All right, so uh, initial profit target, a lot of people set these. You know, sometimes I'll set my initial profit target, uh, again, at a multiple of my defined risk, and my defined risk being my stop loss. Um, so it's going to be at least equal to my, stop, to my risk or my stop loss, uh, but preferably more than that. And the reason you want to do that is that uh, you want your profit to be larger than your, your, uh, your, your risk, uh, the reason you want to do that is that so, you know, you don't have to have such a high winning uh, ratio in order to be consistently profitable. Okay, um, and then uh, we talk about uh, trailing stop. Now, this is more about uh, managing your trades, okay? So uh, you have a trailing stop loss, a dynamic stop loss, a stop loss that moves, okay? So just like the gentleman asked me um, a, a few minutes ago, uh, I believe it was... Uh, Andrew, maybe, uh, asked me about uh, the trailing stop loss. Yeah, absolutely. That's a way to manage your trade, to lock in your profits while you're in a trade, while it's going in your direction. Uh, you, you lock in your profits, and then when the market subsequently turns around and takes you out of the trade with your stop loss, then you've locked in your profits, and you got out when the market is telling you that your trade is no longer viable. It's no longer correct, okay? And you, and you take your profits. Uh, and then uh, another way to uh, exit trades is using multiple positions. So you get into a trade uh, with multiple positions, and you take off those trades at different levels of profit. This is in order to uh, lock in your profits as well as, you know, see if it could go further and take out, uh, you know, take out uh, further profits as it goes further in your direction. Okay, and then, uh, of course, you uh, when you exit your trades, you always want to, uh, take a look at your reward to risk ratio and again preferably your reward is larger than your risk if not a multiple of your risk okay and then I'm not going to go through this a lot we went through this last week confluence we talked a lot about confluence which is basically agreement among time frames um, among time frames among technical uh, technical tools support and resistance chart patterns uh, we talk a lot about or I talk a lot about this uh, you know meaning uh, if uh, if there are a lot of this is again all about putting the edges of your trading together. If you have a lot of uh, your tools telling you that this thing is going to go up, then there's a higher probability that this thing is going to go up rather than if you're just using one tool or if uh, you, you know you have a, a vague idea that or a vague uh, feeling that this thing is going to go higher. Okay, it's better to have more tools, more of your tools telling you that in fact there's a confluence of something going on here that it's going to go up or it's going to go down and therefore you're going to have a higher probability or a stronger trade and again as I you know I can't emphasize this enough why trade a weak trade 
or a weak opportunity when you could trade a strong opportunity, okay? So where possible, we look for areas where more than one factor provide rationale for a trade entry or exit, and we want to look for higher probability trades. And this confluence provides us with higher probability trades. So, you know, I, I talked about the, uh, you know, for the, uh, for the confluence factors, we're looking for the trend, the speed or volatility of the trend. Uh, do multiple time frames confirm this trend? Is the trend pulling back or in correction consolidation mode? Okay, uh, we're looking for the major and minor support and resistance levels, the major moving averages, key chart patterns, key candlestick patterns, and useful indicators. If, the, if these are all telling us, you know, something similar, then perhaps we should follow what these are all telling us. And uh, someone asked me last week, and it was a very good question, you know, uh, if I'm looking at uh, this whole list, and uh, before I take a trade, am I going to miss that trade? Yeah, that's absolutely true. But, you know, if you're a beginning trader, what you should do is you should, you should internalize this. So, uh, you know, at first, yeah, you might have a, a list like this to see, uh, does this fit my criteria for a good trade, okay? Um, but over time, you, you're going to internalize this, and you don't ha need to have a list here. And it's, you're going to see, just from looking at the chart, from looking at the tools on your chart, and looking at the price action, and looking at the fundamentals, you're going to be able to internalize and know exactly, uh, you know, uh, if this is a strong trade or a weak trade, and then you should act accordingly. Okay, so that's confluence. Uh, and then we talked about money management. Uh, I got a lot of great questions here, uh, but they're very long questions, so I'm going uh, to get to these in a little bit, uh, right before I talk about the uh, uh, trading plan, uh, so if you bear with me. Um, so uh, money management, we talked about money management last week. Uh, you know, what is money management all about? It's, it's also about discipline, but it's about, uh, you know, doing everything you can do to survive and thrive over the long run, okay? If you, if you blow out your account, if you lose every, all the money in your account, you simply can't trade anymore, okay, until you, until you get enough money to open another account. So, you know, the key here is you've got to be able to survive to trade another day, okay? Live to trade another day. Uh, and then hopefully, once you've lived for a while, then you'll be able to thrive and you're, you'll be able to make a lot of money and, uh, you know, become uh, consistently net profitable, which is really what everyone's looking for, uh, to do. Okay, so uh, money management is key. And the different elements of money management include position sizing, very, very important. This will depend upon the size of your account, okay, position sizing. Uh, and then uh, being familiar with margin and leverage, of course, uh, and that uh, pertains to, you know, the CFDs, the, uh, the FX, the um, spread betting, if you do that. Um, maximum allowable loss per trade. Uh, you know, every trade you need to have a maximum, you know, point at which, um, you know, you don't, you, a maximum uh, percentage of your equity at which point, you know, you, you, you don't want to lose any more on that particular trade. Okay, and that's very important. Risk-reward ratio, which I just uh, mentioned. Okay, and then we talk about locking in profits, and that includes the um, the stop loss, the trailing stop losses. Um, risk control through automated stop loss, not just mental. Okay, so we talked uh, last week about having a stop loss that's entered into the system, and why do we do that? Again, it all comes down to discipline. Because do you have the discipline? If I ask you this right now, do you have the discipline to cut your trade manually? which means to get out of the position manually if it's going against you. And most people say, yeah, of course I do. I, you know, if it goes against me, I'm going to get out of the trade. I'm going to close the position. If I already determined, to my, if I already told myself I'm going to get out the, at this uh, level, I'm going to get out of this level. Okay, most people say that. But when it comes down to it, in the heat of the moment, when the market is moving in a very volatile fashion and it goes against you and you just have a mental stop loss there, if I ask you the same question then, Okay, the, the answer will probably be, you know, no, you don't have the discipline because, uh, you know, most people do not. And uh, it's not a bad thing. It's just that uh, automated stop losses, the ones that you enter directly into your platform that take you out of trades on, in an automatic fashion, those are to enforce discipline, okay? And uh, th they're very good for that. Now, uh, daily and weekly loss limits, okay? So this means uh, when you're at a certain uh, level of, of a daily loss, okay, if that happens, uh, let's say you're a day trader, then at some, at some point you got to ask yourself, am, do I really want to uh, play catch-up today? Okay, I lost a significant amount of money today. Do I really want to play catch-up? Do I, do I want to, uh, you know, increase my risk today 
by uh, trying to uh, trade larger in order to make up for uh, what I've lost, or do I want to be able to survive to trade tomorrow, okay, and then trade the next day? And if I have a good strategy and a good trading plan, I will make up this loss, okay? So, uh, but we need to have daily and weekly loss limits. Uh, we need to uh, diversify our trades, okay, which means that uh, I used the example last week. If you are short euro dollar, if you're short pound dollar, if you're short Aussie dollar, and if you're long dollar yen, okay, you're, you're trading in, yeah, you're trading in four different uh, currency pairs there. But basically, that's all a long dollar position, long U.S. dollar position. And, uh, and there, you don't have a lot of trade diversification. So what you want to do is you want to be able to diversify your trades. Uh, and of course, uh, resist gambling and target longevity in your trading. And that's a key point about money management. Okay. Um, and then we talked, uh, we also talked about trading psychology and emotional pitfalls. Uh, I'm not going to really go through this a lot, but we talked about, uh, you know, the pitfalls including hoping and praying, fear of pulling the trigger, over trading or unwillingness to take profits, uh, over trading after losses. Well, over trading is a big one. A lot of people succumb to over trading. Uh, in their uh, in their trading, um, and usually it's beginners to do who do that. But also, I've seen many uh, you know veteran traders who have uh, over traded because of emotional uh, factors, uh, including uh, including greed, including uh, you know after they lost after they uh, they have a string of losses they want to they want to play catch up and you know and they over trade. Uh, and then we talk about uh, unwillingness to close tra losing trades because of the need to be right. Uh, again, that goes back to the mental stop loss as opposed to the, the automatic stop, stop loss or the platform stop loss. Um, and then throwing all logic and strategy out the window because of emotional distress or gambling tendencies. Those are all emotional pitfalls and have to do with trading psychology. Okay, so let's get to trading plan discipline. Now, uh, this is the main uh, topic of today. What is trading plan discipline? It's basically having a trading plan. And a tra what is a trading plan? A lot of people ask me, what is, what's your trading plan? Is it, is it the uh, multiple time frame trading strategy? Is it the, uh, is the TPB uh, strategy that you always talk about? Is it uh, a moving average crossover? Is that your trading plan? No, absolutely not. Those, to me, are trading strategies, okay? I know it's all semantics here. It doesn't really... Uh, it's not really that important that, that I differentiate the words there, but, uh, but it is important because of the, the idea behind them. So uh, those, those are strategies that we talk about, okay? So we, when we talk about, like, for example, when I talked about a multiple time frame trading strategy or we talk about a, um, I don't know, an Ichimoku strategy or a candlestick sh strategy, those are all strategies. What is a trading plan? A trading plan is all-encompassing. It includes the trading strategy, but it also includes much, much more, including a lot of what I just talked about, which includes the, um, you know, the money management, the risk management, the trading psychology, uh, the, um, uh, you know, locking in profits, the uh, entry technique, the exit technique, the, uh, you know, how much you're, uh, you're willing to lose on each particular trade, how much you're, you're, uh, you're uh, targeting to, to gain in a certain day, et cetera. This is all part of the trading plan, okay? So, uh, and tied very closely to the trading plan is a tr trading journal, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Okay, so uh, creating a solid trading plan can be one of the keys to becoming a successful trader, okay? It is, you know, for most successful traders I know, they, they've had some sort of a, uh, a trading plan, okay? Some, some sort of a... Um, some, whether it's something written down or it's something in their head or what have you that, uh, that dictates what they would do in every single situation, okay? Uh, when you're, and you're presented with a lot of different situations when you're trading. Okay, so a plan, is, uh, tr a plan for trading is similar to a plan for any other business. If you want to start a business, you've heard this many times before if you're an entrepreneur or what have you, that, uh, you know, if you want to start a business, you should have a business plan. Now, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Most people, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of businesses don't start with a business plan, and uh, it's harder because you want to, you know, the, the ones that have a plan are able, to, uh, are able to know exactly where they're going, okay? They have a, they have a blueprint for where they're going, and then uh, if, you know, the many things that happen to businesses on a daily basis happen, then they're able to better prepare themselves to, to handle those those uh, problems, okay? So it's the same thing with trading. So you want to know 
in any given situation what I should do, okay? Or most given most situations, what should I do when I'm trading? And this is what a trading plan does, okay? So uh, it is essential to ensure that the uh, a trading plan is essential to ensure that the trader sticks with a well thought out and tested approach to growing the business while minimizing risk, okay? So um, what I talked about in the very beginning of this webinar, having uh, the discipline, okay? The discipline to, uh, to have a, a, a trading strategy, but more important than that is the discipline to test that strategy and to test the plan, to see if it works, okay? If you have a strategy that someone sold to you, okay, or you heard from someone, or you heard from me, or you created from scratch, okay, those, uh, those strategies are absolutely no good until and unless you test them for yourself. Okay, if they don't work for you, for the markets you're trading, for the strategy, for the time frames you're using, for your type of trading, etc. If it doesn't work for you, then it doesn't work, period. Okay, it doesn't work flat out. So, um, so what you need to do is test uh, any strategy that you come across or that you create yourself. Okay, and this is part of your trading plan. Now, having the discipline to prepare a trading plan and keep a detailed trading journal allows a trader to use this vital information to discern what exactly is working and what is not working, and what needs to be tweaked in order to, to uh, target success, okay? Um, I'm going to show you my journal in a second, uh, or, you know, uh, sample journals in a second. Now, as a part of this plan, traders should also keep a detailed journal of every single trade after the fact so that there can be an ongoing assessment of exactly how well the trading plan was followed, okay? So uh, I write down everything, okay? I actually type it into an Excel spreadsheet. So um, I, write, I, I type everything into an Excel spreadsheet, including uh, the strategy that I'm using for that particular trade, the date and time I get in. The, I know this is all on the on your your trade uh, you know your trade history, but I write this anyway on my um, on my Excel journal. Okay, so it's uh, you know the the uh, the market I'm trading, uh, the strategy I'm using, the uh, entry date, entry time, uh, you know the entry price level, um, uh, you know my my stop where my stop loss is, where my profit target is. Um, the reasons for my getting to the trade, the reasons for my getting out of the trade, and a lot more. Okay, so all of that, and you know, the percentage I made on that trade. Um, let's see what else. Uh, of course, the total profit or loss on that trade. Um, just a lot of pretty much everything, and I'm going to show you in a minute. But uh, it's everything I put into this journal. Why do I do this? Is this because I just want to? I mean, this it's not like just a. Like a like a diary that you keep every day, you know, writing about your life. This actually helps you learn how to trade better. So if you have everything written down, you know, including your reasoning, then you could see, you could go back and look and what what you did wrong, what you did right, and you're going to want to stop doing the things that were wrong and continue doing the things that were right. And over time, that's how you become a consistently profitable trader. Without a comprehensive trading plan and trade journal, traders may find themselves making blind stabs at the market, and this is absolutely true. Okay? The practice of following a plan and recording the results can make average traders into good traders, and I would say great traders. Okay? If, you're a, if you're an okay trader okay, and you don't write anything down, uh, but you have, a method, you have a methodology, a vague methodology that you follow, that's great. But if you, if you have a trading plan and a trading journal, then you could become a great uh, trader off of that alone, okay? And I, I truly believe that. Okay, so what are the key elements um, for your trading plan uh, and journal? Amount of capital to be used for trading, okay? So basically the equity in your account. Um, uh, primary markets and instruments traded, uh, your position size, margin, and leverage used, uh, the monetary value per point of market movement. This is all, uh, you know, in, in your plan to trade. So, so basically you want to have all this information in your trading plan. This is not the journal. This is the actual trading plan uh, for what you're, um, you know, for your, for your daily trading. So monetary value per point of market movement, the maximum percentage of total trading capital risked on each trade. Uh, again, that's, uh, I mentioned that before uh, under money management. So how much you could, uh, you're willing to risk or you're willing to lose on each individual individual trade. And we talked um, uh, in the past several weeks about how much that should actually be. Um, you know, I talked about 2% for a retail trader, 2% of your uh, account equity, 
uh, would be the very maximum that I would tr uh, that I would risk on each account. Uh, I'm sorry, on each trade in your account. Um, and uh, you know, institutional traders will will risk a lot less than that. But uh, you know, if you have a very small account, then uh, you know, oftentimes people get away with uh, having a larger uh, amount risked. Uh, you know. But uh, generally speaking, I like to keep it as low as possible because I am very risk averse. Okay, I want to be able to trade uh, for a long time and keep making money. So that's why uh, I'm very, uh, you know, I'm very into uh, very conservative risk management. Reward to risk uh, ratio target. I mentioned that before. Uh, realistic daily, weekly, and monthly profit goals. Specific daily, weekly, and monthly loss limits, which I talked about. Okay. Uh, and this is the point of mon monetary loss at which a trader stops trading for the given period. Uh, specific trade entry criteria according to your tested trading strategy, and I can't emphasize that enough, tested trading strategy. Uh, specific trade exit criteria, your stop losses, your profit limits, uh, and when you're managing your trades, your trailing stops and, or, uh, you know, and uh, manual exits according to the tested trading strategy, once again. Uh, methods for managing open trades, which means, you know, like, like I mentioned, the, the trailing stop losses and multi-position entries and exits, among others. Okay, so all of this needs to be in your trading plan and then some. Okay, so very important. Okay, so uh, here uh, is just a, a, an example of a very simple trading plan. Okay, so here you're going to have, um, uh, let me take a look here. Okay, here you're going to have a strategy. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, before I get to this, uh, let me just uh, let me just answer some of these questions here. There are a lot of questions. Um, I'm just going to go from the most recent up. Uh, Maher, uh, where can uh, where can we test strategies? Great question. How do you uh, test strategies? You could test strategies directly on your charts. Okay, whatever charting package you use, whether it be our um, you know our uh, Advantage Trader platform or it's uh, MT4. MetaTrader 4, whatever, whatever platform or charting platform you use, you can met, you could uh, test your, um, you could test your, uh, your trading strategy. And and how do I mean by doing? What do I mean by doing that? When I first started out, okay. When I first started out with uh, trading strategies, with very simple trading strategies um, that I use, and this was many many years ago. This was a couple of decades ago, actually, uh, when I started trading on a very simple basis. What I would do. Uh, would be to uh, go bar by bar, okay, or candlestick by candlestick, and look at how the trading in the past, and look at, at how the trading, uh, uh, the trading strategy worked for me or didn't work for me, okay. So, for example, let's say you have a very simple moving average crossover strategy, where you're looking to, uh, you know, to buy when the, the one moving average crosses above another, or sell when one, you know, one moving average crosses below the other. Uh, it's a very simple strategy. Now, you could test this very simply by going back in time and going from uh, candle to candle and then seeing where you were triggered into trades and seeing how those trades turned out. Okay, that's the simplest way to do it. Of course, there are many uh, automated ways to do that, uh, including through uh, the uh, our MT4 you know trading platform where you could uh, test your strategies um, over long periods automatically and it'll spit out the results for you but if you really want to get a feel for the market I would I would recommend going bar by bar manually and seeing exactly what happens when you put your strategy into play okay and if you do that enough you'll get a feel for the market and more importantly you'll get a feel for the strategy that you're using and whether it's a good one or not and then you could uh, tweak it and change it um, you know from there Okay, uh, the question, realistic daily, weekly, and monthly target. What is realistic? Okay, realistic depends upon, upon uh, how much money you, you have in your account, your risk tolerance, okay, and, and all of that. So and when I say realistic, I just mean make it realistic for the amount of money you have in your account, okay? So uh, what is, what's not realistic? Uh, if you've got 10,000 pounds in your account and you want to make uh, 10,000 uh, pounds in a month, which is 100% in a month, that's unrealistic. I'm, so I'm saying it's unrealistic, okay? So uh, you want to be realistic with your, uh, with your uh, targets, uh, with your uh, profit targets, as well as your exits, okay, as well as your, your risk. 
So uh, depending upon you know what's uh, what you know how much money you have, then uh, then uh, and your risk tolerance, that'll dictate your uh, what what's realistic. Okay, uh, Arvind, uh, is this webinar recorded? Yes, absolutely, it's recorded. It should be shown. Uh, it should be uh, showing up uh, tomorrow on our website, cityindex.co.uk. Um, uh, Andrew, what is a realistic, achievable percentage annual return on an account? Thirty percent. That's a great question too. I I, um, I touched upon this briefly last week. Um, Thirty percent is very realistic. Twenty percent is even more realistic. Forty percent is also realistic. Okay, it depends on uh, a lot of things. Now, what's not realistic is thirty percent a month. Okay, or twenty percent a month, or even ten percent a month. Uh, that you know that would be basically a hundred percent a year. Now, if you if you want to do if you want to make a hundred percent a year, I mean it's doable, but you're going to be taking inordinate risk if you if you try that, and that I always do not recommend. So, uh, when we talk about you know how much can you make, it really depends. It depends on a lot of things. If you want to make a lot of money quickly, uh, this is probably not for you. If you want to make a um, you know if you want to make a lot of money quickly, then you're going to be risking a lot to do that, and you know, and then it becomes like like gambling. So thirty uh, percent realistic, yes, it's realistic. It's it's a pretty thirty percent is a very good uh, number, a good number to shoot for. Um, let me see, uh, Chris. I tend to follow the FTSE. Are indices good or bad to follow? What tools are available apart from the economic calendar? Um, FTSE. I, I I absolutely follow the FTSE. It's a very good uh, it's a very good in, index to follow. If you're, especially if you're in the UK, um, what tools are available apart from the economic calendar? Um, yeah, the economic calendar, and then uh, for if you're trading indices, it's basically the uh, macro events, the macroeconomic events. Uh, same with the uh, currencies, um, and also uh, and your charts. Okay, so th those are the two things that I follow when I'm trading uh, indices. When you get down to the uh, individual shares and stocks, then uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, other things, including, you know, earnings reports, uh, earnings, price, uh, earnings per share, uh, price earnings ratios, et cetera, uh, in terms of fundamentals. And then you've got a lot of other stuff that you're going to look at uh, from, uh, from a technical perspective. So, um, yeah. Andrew, uh, as a UK-based trader, what sort of time lapse should we allow from starter trading hours before using the tools to put together confluence. From the start of trading, um, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you mean from the start of the day, uh, what sort of, t uh, how much, how, how long you should wait before you start, tr uh, you know, from start of trading hours. How long you should wait before trading starts, before you use uh, confluence principles? Uh, I, I use them from the very beginning. So, you know, a lot of people ask, uh, should you be trading in the very in the very opening of the market? And you know, I don't see why not. Um, you know, it could be more. Uh, there's a there's you know, oftentimes more volatility in the very beginning of the trading day. But I don't see why. You know, barring any uh, major events or major announcements, I don't see any reason why uh, people should avoid trading early in the day. I do. Um, okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, Duresh, I would recommend at least one to two risk reward ratio, as even if we have sixty percent losing trades overall, we would still be breaking even overall in the portfolio. Excellent. I I completely agree with you, Duresh. Okay. Um, I know a lot of you like to do this one to one thing. Okay, where you're you're risking one to make one. Um, I don't like to do that, generally speaking, because I'm not such a short. I mean, if you're a very short term trader. You know, people like to do that sometimes, but I'm not such a short-term trader, and uh, I'm more of a longer-term position trader uh, and trend trader. So I'm looking actually much more than one, one to two, oftentimes, often one to one to three, or even more than that, one to four. But um, yes, absolutely. If you have a greater uh, reward-to-risk ratio, meaning your reward your reward is is uh, much higher than your risk, then as you say, Duresh. You could have a lot more losing trades and still be consistently profitable. Okay, great. Um, Andrew, uh, yes, allow a couple of hours 
Wait one second. Okay, uh, Andrew, yes, allow a couple hours first thing to get an idea of trend. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Uh, I, you know, I'm always looking in the very beginning, uh, but sometimes I'll, uh, I'll make a trade right away. Other times, like you say, you could wait for uh, the, the trend to develop, um, you know, but oftentimes you, you could get in later on the trend than you would like to when you do that. Uh, Madalena, what is the best time for trading? Uh, it really depends on what you're trading what market you're trading and uh, and what strategy you're using yeah that's a tough question to answer um, you know it really depends uh, it really depends on a lot of things so if you're trading you know if you're trading shares uh, it's throughout the day I would you know yeah, it's, it's very hard to say it's very I, I'm you know I'm looking at the markets pretty much 24 hours when I'm not sleeping uh, and I'm looking at all kinds of markets I'm looking at uh, the currencies I'm looking at uh, UK uh, UK shares. I'm looking at U.S. stocks. I'm looking at the indices. I'm looking at all of them. Okay, so uh, when I trade really depends on when I see an opportunity. Okay, um, okay. So getting back to this, uh, trading plans and journals, key elements. You know the uh, the strategy, the instrument, time frame, position size, max percent equity risk, risk reward target, leverage used, trade entry, trade exit profit, trade exit loss, open positions, uh, etc. Okay, so uh, as we can see here, um, you know, this shows a little bit uh, the strategy, the specific technical trading strategy used uh, in this uh, action example, pullback strategy version three. Uh, I don't even know if that, uh, if that exists, but, um, you know, it's just an example. Uh, the instrument you're trading, you know, for example, these different uh, uh, currency pairs. Uh, the time frame, which time frame you use, hourly time frame, position size, um, you know, standard lot, et cetera. Uh, maximum percent uh, equity risk. Here I have one percent as an example. Uh, risk reward target uh, one to um, let me see two point five there. Leverage used um, one uh, fifty to one. Okay. Trade entry. Uh, I you this is this was for my uh, multiple time frame trading strategy. I use the uh, coma or correct order of moving averages. Uh, stochastics cross two hundred moving average etc. Trade exit profit uh, reward target hit. Trade exit loss, stop loss five pips beyond swing high low, open positions, stop to break even, and trade in increments. Okay, um, and again, if you guys want uh, a copy of this, please feel free to uh, email me at james.chen at cityindex.com. I'd be happy to send you my PowerPoint presentation uh, because I am going through this rather quickly. But uh, basically, you want to have everything you you, you uh, need here. Uh, that's uh, that's right there. Okay, now this is just an example of. Uh, one of the trading journals that I use, okay, um, one of the trading journals that I use, and this is, uh, happens to be for uh, some options trading uh, that I do, okay, so here, you know, I know it's hard to see, um, but here, this is just a, a this is cut out uh, in, you know, uh, I can't zoom in, this is, uh, this is just uh, pasted onto this uh, PowerPoint pr uh, presentation, but again, if you want to, uh, you know, if you want me to send this to you, I would be more than happy to, but here, um, here is basically you've got the entry date. Uh, this is this is for options, by the way. So th this is uh, uh, just to give you an idea of of the things, uh, the type of things I put in there. Uh, you know the underlying stock, uh, break even. Uh, yeah, this this doesn't even apply here. But uh, the exit date, uh, the underlying, the premium, uh, the commission, the uh, you know the premium, uh, whatever. The uh, etc. This uh, the number of trade days, the total PNL, the uh, return on margin, and uh, the uh, the notes here. Okay, so pretty copious notes on what was going on there um, in these particular options trades. So uh, you know this is just an example of one of my trading journals, and this happens to be from my uh, options trading journal. Um, and uh, there's a lot more here that I couldn't scroll to. Okay, it goes on for a long you know, really long on my, on my Excel sheet, and I couldn't scroll all the way, so uh, I just took a, a, a quick screenshot. But just to give you an idea, you really need to put everything down here, okay? Everything that, that happens. So when you look that back upon it a, a year later, and you could see, this is why I lost so much money, or this is why I made so much money, because I was doing this right, and I was doing this right, and I was doing this right, and I was doing this wrong, okay? And I was doing this wrong, and I'm going to cut out what I was doing wrong and just do what I'm, I'm doing right. Okay, so uh, here is a trading journal example. Uh, you've got the instrument here. You've got the entry date and time here. You got the entry price, the exit date uh, and time, the exit price. The uh, and there should also be entry reason here. 
Okay, that's extremely important. I don't know why that's not here, but entry reason, entry ex uh, exit reason, and then you've got the P&L, the percent of equity um, that gained or lost, and then uh, whether your plan was followed, um, and then you should also have the strategy there as well. So uh, all of this should be on your uh, your trading journal. But most important for this trading journal, journal is that because most of this is on your trading history on your platform, the most important part of this is whether your plan was followed, okay, your uh, strategy used, the entry reason and the exit reason, and basically your notes about that particular trade, okay. Now I I understand if you are an intraday trader and you're trading, let's say you know. 20 to 30 to 40, 50 times a day. Uh, this can get difficult, okay? So uh, this type of uh, uh, trading journal, you know, you're probably gonna, you're probably gonna be hard pressed to, to keep this type of journal if you're trading that much on a daily basis. Um, but uh, if you're trading, you know, more like a swing trader or a position trader, or even a, a day trader that pay, maybe puts in a couple of trades a day, then, uh, then you absolutely need to do this. Okay, if you're if you're if you're doing 50 trades a day, uh, then uh, I'm sorry I can't really help you with this trading journal. But um, other than that, then uh, this is extremely important. Okay, uh, we're not going to go to the charts because I think we run out of time here. But let me just uh, see if we have any other questions. Uh, St uh, Stephen Stephen says uh, London session uh, best time for trading. Well, it depends on what you're trading. Um, uh, London session um, for uh, for some of the currency pairs, absolutely. Uh, for pound dollar, for uh, euro dollar, London session is great. Um, you know, if you're if you're obviously you're trading UK shares, yeah, absolutely. Um, for other things, uh, less so. Uh, now, let me see. How can uh, Durash? How can we spot uh, false breakouts as this, as this there as there has been as there as there have been many? Okay, how do we spot? Um, False breakouts. Uh, you know, it's very difficult. That's why what I do is, and, and I showed you this uh, before. First of all, I have that breakout entry, right? Uh, and then I will have a, a filter, which means that I'm going to have a certain distance uh, beyond the breakout uh, before I get into the trade, okay? But even then, you're going to have false breakouts. Now, uh, false breakouts are the bane of all breakout traders. Uh, that being said, they cannot be avoided okay so uh, that's why you have your risk management in place uh, for those types of situations where uh, where uh, you know there are f uh, false breakouts they're a part of trading they're very difficult to avoid if at all and uh, they need to be taken into consideration when you're trading and that you know that's uh, basically all I could say about false breakouts I hate them too but uh, they're there and they're never going to go away okay um, Let's see, I'm sure I missed a, a bunch of questions here. Okay, let's just see if there's any others before I go. Uh, okay, I think that should be... Uh, okay, uh, yeah, my email. Uh, my email is james.chen at, uh, james at cityindex.com. Any questions, uh, please feel free to contact me there, james.chen at cityindex.com if you have any questions. And uh, hopefully see you next week. Uh, next week on Monday, I'm going to be doing um, an overview of my uh, analysis uh, for the week. And then on Wednesday, we're going to be talking about uh, candlesticks. So hopefully see you all there. And I'd like to thank all of you for your time today and uh, hopefully see you next time. Thank you very much.